fuck just a warning oh my god just a warning this video might be all over the place and it might be kind of long so let's get into it i wanted to show you guys this little quick easy hairstyle that works really well with dirty greasy hair just pull out some wispies gather some chunks and just start twisting the back around clip her in place uh oh obviously before we get into the video i have to show you this outfit because it would just be a crime if i didn't this is a harness this isn't meant to be a shirt but i'm wearing it as a shirt to feel sexy and be extra so if a nipple pops out at any point just ignore it mm. i'm so excited i i got mm. I want this video to be about traveling and I'm going to dive into expectations versus reality with traveling, how to plan accordingly, just shit along those lines. I have filmed so many like vlog styled videos of road tripping, traveling, hiking, backpacking, um, and sometimes I get asked about traveling as a topic in general so here i am i decided to be slightly professional for this i made a list of bullet points let's start off with the very first point the thing i get asked the most saving up money for a trip personally i don't invest money in in material items too much and if i do most of the material items that I have in my space and in my environment has been upcycled, thrifted, recycled. I definitely do invest in like newer things that are a little bit more costly, but because I don't spend money mindlessly, mindlessly on material things, I am able to use that extra bit of money for traveling. If you don't want to sacrifice treating yourself to things because not everybody thinks the way that I do. I would just recommend dedicating a percentage of your income towards not just savings in particular, but for fun, adventure, traveling. And that might be $100 a month or $50 a month or I don't know, whatever your budget is. With that being said, these are my thoughts on saving money in case you care. I heard somebody say, pay yourself before you pay your bills, which might sound a little weird but put money into your savings put money into your travel investment for example make sure you have groceries in the fridge make sure you have gas in your car before you pay your rent before you pay that credit card bill while those things are extremely important and you have to make sure you're taking care of those responsibilities because that's what they tell us that you have to pay your bills you have to pay for a box to live in and if you are paying somebody before you pay yourself you're not seeing yourself as much of a priority as you're seeing your landlord you are as much of a priority as those other bills if you want to start saving money for traveling make that a bill something that you invest in uh monthly if i don't know that's just something that i would personally do i don't think th this video is not going to be structured in the most organized format i literally am just going through this checklist in ways that i think flow most naturally and i think the most natural topic to talk about next is how to save money while traveling these are the things i wrote down cooking at home home could be at the hostel at the hotel at the airbnb um, at your campsite cooking versus eating out will always save you money hostels is a very inexpensive way to travel compared to um, Airbnbs or hotels. I have stayed at plenty of hostels and I have found that extremely accessible when traveling by myself and also when traveling with friends. Public transportation is always a little bit cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. Uh, things like trains, buses, and I guess this isn't considered public transportation, but renting a car if you're old enough and if you're able to um, is always going to be a little bit cheaper than doing things like cabs, taxis, Ubering. Another form of like public transportation, I just don't know how easy this will be in every scenario, but renting a bike. I did this just a few weeks ago, even though this wasn't like a big trip, I went down to Miami and instead of driving around, I just rented a bike. 
and that literally costs one dollar a day that just kind of leads into my next point certain areas are more expensive than others and that's something to consider when planning your trip or when thinking about your trip traveling with other people will most likely make your trip less expensive i am all about solo traveling i live for those experiences of just being out by myself exploring but i also enjoy doing things with my family and my friends and whatever and that always makes things a little bit less expensive because you're sharing the cost of say a place to stay or transportation or whatever it is it's it's usually a little bit cheaper if you do travel with other people another thing i would recommend doing to save money while while being out in the world there's so many free activities that you can research wherever i am i always look up donation based yoga classes i look up nature trails to go hike or the beach because those are things that i personally love but depending on your lifestyle and your interests you can always look up like I don't know, there's free music events, whatever your personal interests are, look up events or activities that are happening. And that goes into my next point, which is planning versus not planning. Pros and cons of both. I have done both. I have done spur of the moment, random trips where I've just packed up and left and didn't know what the hell I was doing. And then I've also taken a little bit more time to plan stuff. And I'm going to explain why I enjoy both of those routes but before i get into that next point i do want to talk to you guys about this company it's just so fitting because we're talking about like traveling outdoorsy activities this company called aliexpress has some outdoor gear that they sent me these are some cool gadgets and i am a gadget girl this first little thing comes in this nifty little box which is really good for storing and for traveling purposes it keeps everything compact the edge of the stove has this metal design which is waterproof and it helps prevent wind from blowing out your flame one of the first points i made was cooking at your destination to help save money my point in talking about saving money is just to help encourage people to travel more i feel like the expense of traveling holds people back from doing so and so that's my intention of sharing like money saving tips is just to try to encourage people to get out there okay anyways cook your meals at home use this little portable stove furnace thingy the next thing that they sent me is this energy saving portable on the go coffee pot everything you need is stored inside of the coffee pot this part screws onto the bottom this is what you'll attach a burner to we've got this little thing which is like a stand so that way it's not just sitting on the dirt it goes right on the bottom here and it just elevates it this is basically like a portable French press. That's what I compare it to. It goes on top just like this, and you push this part down, and it's like a portable little French press. The heat exchanger design helps you save up to 30% fuel, so it doesn't take as much time or energy to heat this up, and it also keeps the coffee or tea or whatever it is hotter for longer. I pulled up some logistics. It's got a 11,000 11, BTU robust flame. I don't know exactly what that means, but it sounds legit. And it's an adjustable firepower. Next and last product, which is actually, I think this is my favorite thing that they sent me. This, my friends, is their split furnace. It comes in this nifty um, travel bag. I'm gonna set it up literally right now in my bedroom just so you can see what it looks like. <laughs> this thing is I'm five six this is probably at least six foot feet tall this is the perfect single person sleeping area I love this thing I just want to leave this laid out in my room this could be like an extra bed if I had a slumber party this is so easy to set up it literally takes two minutes I'm not even exaggerating I could sleep on this right now I feel so lucky that I just that I get that I got these products like I'm so thankful that I get to work with such cool companies and share such cool products with you guys if you guys want to check out these products from Aliexpress 
I do have some discount information. I'll leave them down in my description along with a link to their website so you guys can go do what you want to do to get your hands on this shit. Back to where I left off, planning versus not planning a trip. Pros and cons. One of the biggest pros of not planning and when I say not planning, I mean not necessarily knowing where you might stay, just kind of figuring it out when you get there. I think that's a lot easier to do if you are traveling by yourself. And one of the biggest pros for me when not planning a solo trip like that is just the freedom. I cannot tell you how many solo trips I've done that I ended up in certain cities, certain towns, with certain people, staying in certain spots that I had no idea I would end up in. And that probably wouldn't have happened if I planned it. And when I say planned it, that means mapping out where exactly I want to be before even getting there. And there, there are pros to planning things. I think it is a bit more cost effective, but I think with last minute planning, last minute, last minute figuring it out. Um, I have spent a bit more money on uh, places to stay like when you're booking something the night of or the day before it can be a little bit more expensive I don't think there's really that many significant pros or cons for either I think they're both extremely different experiences I think they're they're worth um, experiencing both goes into my next point which is group traveling versus solo traveling try both if you're able to and if you want to i know some people have no desire to travel uh, by themselves and some people probably have no desire to travel with a group or with a friend or with anybody and i personally enjoy both it's almost like planning versus not planning a trip completely different experiences during all of my solo traveling i have been able to just well, one, honor exactly what it is that I want to do. I don't have to worry about what my friends want to do, which is kind of nice. And I've also been able to spend quality time with myself, which is possible when you're not on a trip. You can spend quality time with yourself just at home in your everyday life. But it's a little bit different when you are exploring the world, exploring a new place, doing that by yourself. It's for me at least, it has built my confidence, but also with group traveling, that could be one other person or that could be 10 other people. Like, it doesn't matter. But when traveling with other people, obviously having the company is always so inviting and so enjoyable, especially if it's somebody, like people you love, friends, family. You feed off of each, other, each other's energy and excitement and that in itself is such a gift. Thinking about group traveling instantly pulls me back to when I went out to Hawaii when I was about 19 I think I was like 18 or 19 years old I went out with my cousin and a group of our girlfriends I tried vlogging every single day of that trip and they're they're way 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 back on my channel you can go watch those vlogs if you want to but this is one thing that I feel like they do not tell you enough you need to rest on your trip i feel like through youtube through instagram through tiktok and all of these platforms all you see are like the highlights and the fun and the non-stop adventure when people are traveling but part of traveling is resting i personally think that you need to recharge your energy and rest up whether that's taking an hour for yourself or 30 minutes for yourself to take a good shower, drink some water, eat a good meal, and like just refuel, or taking a nap. Like taking intentional time to not worry about keeping up with the adrenaline of adventuring. The last point that I wrote down is backpacking versus suitcasing. Because I have been backpacking for the past eight years. Oh my God, I thought it was only six years. I guess I am getting older. Yeah. For the past eight years, I have not used a suitcase. The only times I use a suitcase are during situations when I'm moving and I need it for extra space. The difference between backpacking and suitcasing is just not bringing stuff that you don't need. We overpack, I think, for multiple reasons. Those what if scenarios. What if I wanna wear this to dinner? What if I wanna wear this bikini? What if I need this? What if I, you know what I mean? And I feel like those what if scenarios get us to overpack obviously if you want the options pack the options but for me personally backpacking has allowed me to move about more freely it allows you to spend less time focusing on the materialistic items that you brought the materialistic way that you're going to dress and it allows you to spend that extra time 
absorbing where you are or at least that's what it's done for me it's also cheaper to backpack because i'm pretty sure every airline allows you to bring like a personal item or like a carry-on that was my last point i hope that this video was somewhat engaging and interesting and fun to listen to and fun to watch i hope you were able to use these points that i listed to prepare for your next trip Thank you guys so much for su supporting me and watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please thumbs it up and I will see you in my next one. Bye.